Here's Secretary Blinken summarizing Biden's call. Now, a lot of skepticism is warranted here because they keep doing this. They keep calling, keep saying we've been really, uh, Biden is just fuming. Fum- fuming, fuming. And all it ends up doing is just making Biden look weak because wh- why can't he get the government of Israel to do what he wants them to do? It's and, been six months. I mean, or, or yeah. and why won't he use his, his leverage? Uh, here is Blinken. And, and remember, this comes at a time, too. Do not forget that while Israel was essentially assassinating these world, uh, these world central kitchen workers, they also assassinated uh, a, an Iranian uh, general in uh, Syria at an embassy, is my understanding. And you're not supposed to strike embassies. There's some rules to war. But what are they doing? I mean, ask yourselves. You're engaged in a war, their, their idea, of in Gaza. Why would you pick that time to provoke Iran? And there's only one, one reason why you would do that. It's because you want to provoke Iran. You know that the U.S. has got military personnel all scattered through the Middle East. They have them in Syria. They have them, uh, you know, at the embassy in Iraq. I'm sure there are other places. They're also building a, you know, a dock, uh, supposedly, in, in Gaza. You want to provoke Iran to respond, if not to Israel, to the U.S., yeah, because and, you want an ex- you. I mean, th- this has been Netanyahu's goal. They have tried to absolutely. do this with Hezbollah in uh, in in Lebanon. You would think the first reaction you think you would do is like you wouldn't want to open up multiple fronts. They want to do that. Netanyahu sure- wants to widen this war for purely existential reasons for his political career as well and ideologically. He's been wanting to go to war with Iran for as long as I can remember that PowerPoint presentation he gave claiming they were cheating on the nuclear deal to get Trump to withdraw from it. 100%. I mean, huge part of it. And Trita Parsi made this point. It's so key. The U.S. and Iran were clearly engaging in diplomatic talks back channel. The militia attacks from their proxies had ceased for six weeks against U.S. personnel. Israel is aware that that was not happening anymore. So this isn't just trying to provoke Iran independently. It's trying to sabotage the United States and their efforts to cool the situation down in the region. That is the thing that I just can't get over, how brazen that action is. And, you know, you wonder about those sales of F, uh, was it F-31s, uh, F-35s, uh, that they're, um, they're contemplating right now. They're not using those in Gaza. Mm-hmm. They're using those. The Palestinian Air Force? Exactly. They're not using, they're, they're using those for somebody else. And if we're so close on the brink of a peace treaty, between Saudi Arabia and Israel, like what? What are these? What are these airplanes for? What are these fighter jets for? It, so it's unclear to me how much Netanyahu definitely wants to pull uh, the U.S. into a conflict with Iran. It's unclear to me how much the U.S. wants to get pulled into that. I don't. I, I would generally think uh, they wouldn't. But I, I have no doubt there there aren't people in the administration and in the, the blob, as it were, who are not like, you know what? Let's just do it all. Yep. Let's just do it all. Get Clean it over with. Rip the Band-Aid off type of situation. Nevertheless, here is Tony Blinken. This is coming uh, after Joe Biden's very sternly worded phone call to Netanyahu basically saying, and apparently uh, state spokesperson uh, uh, John Kirby, uh, the national security, did you see this, where he said uh, this is a matter of hours and days, not uh, weeks. We can maybe pull that. Because the, the, the rhetoric is different than it was just even two days ago. But it's just rhetoric. Here's Blinken. President Biden spoke a short while ago with Prime Minister Netanyahu. The leaders discussed the situation in Gaza. 
The President emphasized that the strikes on humanitarian workers and the overall humanitarian situation are unacceptable. He made clear the need for Israel to announce a series of specific, concrete, and measurable steps to address civilian harm, humanitarian uh, suffering, and the safety of aid workers. He made clear that U.S. policy with respect to Gaza will be determined by our assessment of Israel's immediate action on these steps. He underscored as well that an immediate ceasefire is essential to stabilize and improve the humanitarian situation and protect innocent civilians, and he urged Prime Minister Netanyahu to empower his negotiators to conclude a deal without delay to bring the hostages home. Pause it for one second. We don't that last line is pretty key because all we've heard is that Hamas keeps walking away from a deal. Hamas can end this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hamas. Why six months into this is the president of the United States urging Netanyahu to empower his negotiators to conclude a deal? That sounds like, I mean, what would the opposite of that be? That uh, what must be the status quo yeah. right now? It is that Netanyahu has not given his negotiators the right, the sign off to actually conclude a deal, regardless of what the deal is. I mean, the, he's been manipulating them this entire time, this entire time. If, that, if I'm sure in those rooms with Blinken, he's feeling frustrated, probably. Right. And maybe like there, he's having face to face conversations or more intimate conversations with the Israeli negotiators. But the, the buck stops with Netanyahu and the war cabinet, which is just as committed to this genocide as anybody. Um, but by, but Netanyahu in particular, like I know I, I, I hate the rhetorical shift to making him the big bad by the Democrats because it absolves like the entire history of the settler colonial project and what Israel was before Netanyahu but it also is true that he is a unique he's uniquely maniacal and in a very unique position to like to escalate this and broaden it because of his own selfish desire to remain in power because there are massive protests in the streets in Israel and Benny Gantz is leading him in polling right now and has the favor of the United States and they're clearly talking to him trying to get new elections but he says in September too by the way the the amount that's that, yeah that's no yeah. Uh, September seems a little uh, late um, but the the fact that the U.S. obviously has known for at least some time that Netanyahu has not empowered his negotiators to make a deal. In mm -hmm. other words, the negotiations are fraudulent. It is, you know, this is the like, well, look, I'd love to sell you this car, but I need to go back to my manager and, uh, you know, before I sign off on it, right. I think. It's just, it's just a game. To That's just time. a game. And, but the point is, the U.S. has known this. And whatever it is that the U.S. said in this tough phone call to Bibi Netanyahu to get him to open up the, um, uh, uh, the, the one crossing in the north and allow uh, uh, an Israeli port to be used to get uh, relief aid in, they clearly have some leverage. And they haven't exhausted any of it as far as I can tell. Was it, w w did he threaten planes, you know, did, to not sell the planes? Did he threaten the other uh, $18 billion of, of aid that Israel is going to get? Is he, is he threatening to, you know, lock those uh, caches of, uh, of weapons that are stored in Israel? You guys don't have the key anymore to that, essentially, facility? Uh, we don't know. But the point is, is that everything that the critics of U.S. policy in regard to Israel have been saying, which is Biden has some leverage, or at the very least, he hasn't even tried to use any. Two, that the Israelis have clearly been attempting to uh, genocide Palestinians by denying them food. That Israel wasn't going to stop, and they, and they were not in any way protecting civilians. I mean, we've seen this now. Even if we stipulate that there was one guy with a gun that they thought was Hamas, 
there's no indication that they thought this was like the guy who uh, runs all of this the, the brains behind Hamas they thought it was one Hamas potential fighter with a gun they're willing to kill seven aid workers who are in a protected corridor in vehicles clearly marked we now know from this reporting too from 972 mag about the supposed ai thing they have the most egregious parts of their ai program to kill hamas uh fighters are the decisions that are made by humans as in we're going to tell the ai to wait until hamas people go home at night with their families under a i guess the uh, code name where's daddy yeah they wait Disgusting. for them to go home to their families in apartment buildings and then they blow them up so it's not that hamas is using human beings as uh, as human shields their families as human shields it's that they actually have families and they go home to them they're 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 Gaza is not very big. It's not like they can go to the front and uh, they go home. And then uh, Israel blows and their whole algorithm, essentially, there uh, is. We accept 100 civilian casualties. If we're uh, if we're targeting one Hamas fighter and they'll go on as well to just sort of uh to, to create these algorithms they'll basically say we know they have these kill zones where you see a man and you shoot them if you see a man you don't have to see a, any man you see is presumed to be hamas that's why they shot their own uh hostages that's where they get that nine thousand hamas fighter figure from out of it's it's bs it's completely made up it's just the men that they kill. I mean. All right. Here's a uh, blanket continuing. Sorry. They still kill some yeah, And he urged Prime Minister Netanyahu to empower his negotiators to conclude a deal without delay to bring the hostages home. If we don't see the changes that we need to see, there'll be changes in our own policy. Um, do we have that Kirby thing? Kirby, the day after the or the day of the attack on the uh, world central kitchen workers said, you know, we're going to wait for the Israelis to figure this out. And the, the tone has changed in the past couple of days. There's no doubt about it. Now, there's, out, there's absolutely no reason to believe that we won't see this tone deployed again and again and again like we have in the past. But hope springs eternal. But there is a, there is a difference in tone extent possible to see if we can get this deal in place and then just on uh, the substance of the real news from the president's statement there uh, saying that he's going to condition future U.S. support for this uh for israeli for the israeli operations in gaza um on what israel does first off what is at stake what would be potentially cut off uh from israel for use of this war if uh, if it doesn't change course and second what do you want specifically to see from israel what to do to protect civilians and humanitarian aid workers i'm not going to preview um uh, any potential policy decisions coming forward. Um, uh, what we want to see are some real changes uh, on the Israeli side. Um, and, um, you know, if we don't see changes from their side, there'll have to be changes from our side. But I won't preview what that could look like. Now, they talked about the, what, I'm sorry. Is that just the body count or is there a specific uh, Again, I'm, I'm, as, in terms of concrete steps, uh, what we are uh, looking to see and, and hope to see here uh, in coming hours and days is uh, a dramatic increase in the humanitarian assistance getting in, additional crossings opened up, uh, and a, um, a reduction in the violence against uh, civilians and certainly aid workers. We want to uh, we want to see that, uh, that uh, even as the Israelis work through their investigation, that they are willing and able to take practical, immediate steps 
steps to protect aid workers on the ground and to demonstrate uh, that they that they have that civilian harm mitigation in place. So again, those are broad brushes. I'll let the Israelis speak to what they will or won't do here. But again, in coming hours and days. Okay, uh, coming hours and days. Um, there's enough like sort of wiggle room that they're going to find within coming hours and days that they have they have achieved those things. Uh, the real the 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 real test. Well, no, never mind test. The real ask should be, all right, cease your operations. Because it is clear that the Israelis do not know how to fight. And that, and to be fair to them, there is no way for them to uh, eradicate Hamas in the way that they claim that they want to. No one thinks that they can do that. And short of killing everybody, uh, every male, I guess, in Gaza, which... I don't know that they would have a problem doing, but I think that uh, they realized that they couldn't get away with it. But the, the ask should be, or the tell should be, or the demand should be, not just aid uh, to people in Gaza, and they're going to focus on the north, but also you don't attack the 1.5 million internal, uh, di- internally displaced refugees living in Rafah. Well, that is that's the that is the pressing, really urgent, um, ur- urgent potential bloodbath in front of us. I mean, we have no many, no idea how many people have starved to death already. So that that is going to be a staggering figure once it comes out. But protecting the civilians in Rafa is is key. In terms of the shift in tone, that is that is m- notable. Because we played a clip two days ago, or maybe yesterday, but it was from two days ago, of a swashbuckling John Kirby getting extremely agitated with the idea that Israel um, deli- may have deliberately targeted those kitchen, uh, World Central kitchen workers and saying that they have done a review and Israel has not violated international law. Then what is this? Then what is this? And I, I, I can't move on from this story without noting that this these changes are coming because western white people were killed like they had no problem with the fact that we know that 14,000 palestinian children are dead 14,000 palestinian or, children have been killed minimum or uh, a palestinian uh, aid workers whether it was yeah. from unra or other organizations or journalists i mean this is this is because other countries i mean frankly poland has some issues right now with israel they don't uh and this is a protected corridor. I mean, the whole thing. Uh, but it really also, I think there is an awareness of, and let's just play this one uh, clip and then we'll get to uh, some calls. There's really two clips that, that, that show uh, Biden. Shifting. Well, getting pressure, I guess. He's shifting maybe, but he's definitely getting more pressure. Here is Chris Coons, who was his primary surrogate in the 2020 primary, um, I didn't mean to use that word twice, but he was his uh, like first guy surrogate in yeah. the 2020 primary. His, his his mentee to a degree who took over for him in the Senate in in uh, in 2008 in Delaware. You've had words with Benjamin Netanyahu. The president has had words with Benjamin Netanyahu. At what point? does the policy change? Do you support a change in policy instead of a carrot, instead of words, a stick, uh, saying to Israel that in order to get military aid, you have to change your tact? When does that happen? I think we're at that point. I think we're at the point where uh, President Biden has said, and I have said, and others have said, if Benjamin Netanyahu, prime minister, were to order the IDF into Rafah at scale, they were to drop thousand pound bombs and send in a battalion uh, to go after Hamas and make no provision for civilians uh, or for humanitarian aid that, that I would vote to condition aid to Israel. I've never said that before. I've never been here before. I've been a strong supporter of Israel the whole time I've served in Congress. Uh, we just appropriated another $3.3 billion of support in the last appropriations bill we did. The challenge is to make it clear that we support the Israeli people 
people, that we want to and will continue to have a strong and close relationship with Israel, but that the tactics by which the current prime minister is making these decisions don't reflect the best values of Israel or of the United States. So things have gotten so bad for the first time you were saying, yes, we will put conditions on military aid. I'm speaking if, for myself. Speaking obviously. for yourself. But, um, but it, it, if, you, they, if they continue with large scale military operations in Rafah without making any provision uh, for civilians. Now, to continue fighting Hamas, taking targeted raids, small. All right. Uh, I mean, I think we heard the, um, uh, you know, the key phrase there. I'm not speaking for myself. Well, meaning... I'm not speaking for myself, but he also. <laughs> That's not true. Even though he's introducing this, he's also giving himself his out, right? Yeah. Like they need to take uh, uh, care for civilians. What does that mean? Um, it, it, you know. I, 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 it's all a pretext. Like, I mean, you, you mentioned it. It's a, it's a pretext, but it is still, the, at the very least, again, like, I'm not saying uh, we should champion Chris Coons, but it is indication of the heat that they're feeling. Yeah. And even if Coons is just on there letting a little air out of the tire, it means that the air is expanding in the tire, as it were. Totally. And so uh, the protesting is, is working. And, you know... As as painful as this is, uh, we were talking about uh, Waleed Shahid, who's uh, been retweeting a lot of Morning Joe. Or sort posting of, a lot of Morning posting, Joe. Posting a lot clips. of Morning Joe uh, dissent. Criticism of and Biden. And criticism of Biden. And you recall from, I can't remember what reporting it was, that uh, you know Joe Biden watches Morning, watches Joe, Morning watches Joe like uh, Donald Trump watches Fox and Friends. Yep. And... So that it's happening there is you know, maybe helpful. Yes. And uh, yesterday we played the clip of a uh, former Bush administration official, Richard Haas, going further than Chris Coons saying sanctions. That's where we're at right now. Ceasefire. I, I, we are well past that point. Also, the United Nations passed the ceasefire resolution. The U.S. abstained and Israel's been in violation of it. So I, like. We're, we're so past the point where this is a rogue state that needs to be sanctioned yesterday. Um, but the fact that that was said on Morning Joe and by like a Republican. Yep. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, that does indicate how honestly out to lunch Biden is on this and how far behind where he is, where he needs to be. And the Rafa, the Rafa is their crown jewel because it's the concentration of Palestinians in a territory where it's easiest to kill them. Like they want to, they want to go and, and, and get the most bang for their bomb if it, <laughs> and, and kill as many as they can. Like, that's what's so, fr we're having a parallel conversation. We're, we're saying like, well, we really need the cat to bark. Well, the cat doesn't bark. The cat meows. Like we we really need Israel to protect civilians. Yeah, whole... Israel's killing civilians on purpose. That's the point of this. This was the pretext. Like you know, the Hamas attack October seventh triggered the plan that was the eventual uh, culmination of this entire project. This is exactly what they want to do, yeah. and they felt that they feel that they have the the moral justification because of the atrocities on October seventh to do so. And Netanyahu is deranged uh and needs this for his own political survival and biden is like stuck in 1973. anybody who had any familiarity with the conflict um would know on like october 8th if if you mean like if people saying it's go time people know exactly what that means yes and it's this it's what we've seen in the six months since um morning joe's mika brzezinski and morning joe we're uh, interviewing the Israeli Minister of Economy and Industry near Barkat. Um, it's a long interview. They get pretty, um, they, they question him about a lot of things, including um, propping up uh, Hamas, uh, including, you know, the killing of these, uh, these NGO World, Day, World Central Kitchen workers. And in the end, uh, they, uh, Brzezinski asked him, you know, how are you going to protect civilians? Um, I think, again, watching them do this on Morning Joe is an indication of where the country has gone. It may be an indication of where the White House is going, because uh, communication, I doubt, is limited between just Joe Biden watching the TV show. I'm sure they get feedback. 
I'm sure there are people at the administration who are like, I think he's ready to do this. So, you know, it would be great if there was some cover for mm -hmm. him doing this. I mean, that's just basically the way it works. So regardless of, of in which direction this, uh, this sentiment is flowing, it may uh, be in some ways a virtuous circle, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. But what is interesting about this last segment of this interview is this guy's you, you can so easily see um, the lack of sense that Palestinians are human to this guy. It is uh, even in the premise. He can't he can't s straighten it out. He's like, we won't kill innocent people. Now, of course, you know, most of these people are not innocent. So it, that eliminates that uh, dilemma. But go. Direct. And I want to ask a question about that, because and you, every every victim in this has been mentioned by you, sir, except for civilians starving in Gaza. And I just want to point out that you never even when asked, you didn't mention that. I'm not going to ask because I well, I've heard. Uh, uh, but I want to ask you, given the questions that Joe has just raised and given the, the gravity of the situation, is Benjamin Netanyahu fit to lead at this moment? First of all, I do have to answer, we don't want anybody, any civilian, uh, to suffer. And we collaborate with the world, funding, uh, helping uh, the innocent people, the innocent people in Gaza, that 80% of them, 70, 80% of them back? support. No, did he go, did the, he do air quotes there? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's doing air quotes, but you got to go that. back further because he, and the reason why he does air quotes <laughs> is because he's just about to say, like, they're innocent, except they're all guilty. Right. And we collaborate with the world, funding, uh, helping uh, the innocent people, the innocent people in Gaza, that 80% of them, 70, 80% of them support October 7th. We don't want anybody to, to starve or anything. And we will be uh, helpful to the world, uh, collaborating and helping them. And by the way, there's no president, no presidents in the world when you have a war that you help your enemy this is the first time in all wars that israel is willing to help the gazan people and not to starve we want to make okay. sure that they move away now obviously the guy doesn't speak english as his first the language but he says it's unprecedented for uh, a country to help its enemy we're talking about providing aid to civilians, Palestinian civilians in Gaza. And here he is saying, these are our enemy. I just want to be clear because the, you know, it depends on who you're talking to as they say, well, well they're not fighting. They're not, th those are collateral damage, the civilians, the Palestinians who are not Hamas, they're, they're, they're collateral damage. Except for this guy saying, <laughs> they're the enemy and we're helping them. Which, you know, I know this is not a surprising sentiment to a lot of a lot of people, but it is probably to some people who watch Morning Joe. The you know, they they enabled and helped those protesters who are stopping the trucks going into uh, Gaza because they, they were arguing the exact same thing, that they're our enemy. The only thing they were saying is that we shouldn't be helping them. But this guy is saying they're our enemy. We're waging war against them, the, the Palestinian civilians, and yet we're allowing aid in. Now, they are allowing aid in as of maybe this morning when he was on, but they weren't like two days ago. There was a reason why they had to do airdrops. It wasn't because the U.S. was like, we want to do a pilot program of airdrops, or we want to do a pilot program where we build a pier. It's because Israel was preventing aid from going in. Uh, preventing food that's also why they killed those workers let's be clear too and then they're 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 the ones helping the enemy by feeding them the civilians they're feeding those those children who have you know terrorist ideology from when they grow up right like they're barely human if george bush called all iraqis the enemy we would still remember that clip <laughs> yeah i mean the point the, the point is is that the the story of things like they use um people as human shields and we really regret they do they do that well then why would you set up your uh, automated system for killing uh, hamas members to wait until they get home 
I mean, it's a, it's just a lie. Why would you say we're not fighting uh, the we're liberating the Gazan people from Hamas, and then say? I just want to remind you, they're the enemy, and we're now providing them aid. There's no consistency. There's no principles associated with any of this. It's all just a lie. It's just a, it is just a game of we're going to throw up one lie, whack them all, yep. throw up another lie, whack them all, throw up the original lie, whack them all, and just cycle and rinse and repeat. And to, they're trying to bide more time with every tactic, with the uh, fraudulent ceasefire negotiations with the uh they were trying to do that when the again that new york times piece came out about sexual violence on october 7th attempting to continue to just say like this was so horrible so at a turning point in the war when the public was beginning to start to turn against it um they are trying to bide as much time as possible until it becomes untenable for them because again the 32 33,000 death toll that we see is not the case it is much higher there's no ability to verify or count the dead at this point there's no infrastructure left so they worry that once the true reality gets out that they won't be able to keep doing the killing so they're acting with this urgency and that's why they're excited about the rafa opportunity because there's so many of these subhumans concentrated in this refugee camp so they can get more bang for their buck here like that is truly what this is so we're at this precipice right now and god, god I, I just have so much fear about when those v v people are actually able to verify and they go in how many we will see who have been killed it is going to be staggering already um someone just mentioned that uh uh that the i had said that uh, Israel had struck an, an Iranian embassy. It was an Iranian co consulate. Uh, con consulate. So I just want to be clear about that. Uh, Juniper J, the media would be throwing a fit if another country had done that. Isn't that an international crime? Yes. Yes and yes. We had Let a Chinese embassy during Kosovo, and it was a big problem. And it was by a mistake. Yeah. It wasn't a targeted thing, right? right? I mean, we were bombing other things. Know, we yeah. just weren't careful enough. Right. I mean, and, and, and there was some question as to whether it was by mistake, but the pretense was it right. was by mistake. There's no pretense of that here. Exactly. This is an explicitly done thing on purpose. Nobody's denying that. Hey, they fired those two guys. Well, they fired the two guys who were involved in the World uh, Central Kitchen yeah. strike. A few bad apples. It, it, those guys. Like, I mean, uh, you know, that's like, I don't know. It's really the functional equivalent of, of me uh, blaming uh f fake brendan uh the producer here for whatever it is yeah i'm sorry yeah brendan didn't get to that today i mean once we had a real brendan what was it no patrick that was the name of the guy right oh yeah it was patrick it's you patrick's kept calling fault. brendan patrick early on yeah it's patrick's fault it'd be like if an anti-vaxxer like blamed a producer for mm -hmm. giving a fake, uh, <laughs> literally just <laughs> exactly it's patrick's fault